and Miss Donna, they all gather around the piano and do a little singing on that song. Amen? Amen. All right, you'll be finding 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. Next uh, few Sunday nights, we're going to be looking uh, a series of messages entitled, and what verse is that? What verse is that? I want to ask you something tonight, and you're welcome just to, to holler it out to me if you want to, but uh, who was it who said, beam me up, Scotty? <laughs> Captain James Kirk. Well, actually, no, he, he didn't say that. Actually, what he said was, beam us up, Mr. Scott. Well, who, who said, uh, me Tarzan, you Jane? <laughs> Come on, you got to know that. Tarzan. Well, not really. Actually, actually, what he said was, and I, I wish I had Stacy up here, but basically what he said was, <laughs> he said, oh, never mind, never mind. <laughs> basically, what he said was, and he was... Patner, he said, Jane Tarzan. Jane Tarzan. Well, who said, Luke, I am your father? <laughs> Darth Vader. Well, it wasn't actually, that's not exactly what he said. He said, no, I am your father. Well, listen, let me ask you this. You, you kids, who said this? I cannot tell a lie. <laughs> what did he say? What did he say? Amen, bro. <laughs> After he was questioned about chopping down the cherry tree, who said, I cannot tell a lie? All right. Well, did you know that that was fabricated by his 19th century biographer? Hard to believe. Now, be honest. Be honest with me tonight. How many of you have ever said this to somebody? You don't have to raise your hand. You don't have to scream it out. But how many of you have ever said this to somebody? Well, you know, the Bible says God will never put on you more than you can bear. You know what that God, God said? God said, patting you on the back now, God said that he'll never put on us more than we can bear. Well, my question to you is, could you give me book, chapter, and verse for that? <laughs> I mean, what verse is that? Would you be surprised to know that that's not in the Word of God? As a matter of fact, actually, uh, just the opposite really is taught. Now, when people say that, they may be thinking about 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, where, where the Bible says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. But listen, that verse on over in 1 Corinthians is not referring to burdens and trials. That verse is referring to times of temptation. And in the time of temptation, God promises that the temptation will not be so strong and will not be, so, be such that we could not escape and thereby bear it or deal with it. Now, can, can you imagine... I want you to just imagine the Apostle Paul and what we know about him and all that he's been through in his life and on his missionary journey. Can you imagine an old boy coming up beside Paul and, and uh, uh, say, Paul, I understand the predicaments you've been in. I, I know you've been shipwrecked. I know you've been bitten by snakes. I know uh, you've been stoned. People have been, uh, uh, you've been left to die. I mean, you've been struck with uh, 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 cords and whips. And, uh, but, old Paul, I, I just want you to know God will never put more on you than you can bear. I don't you know that's one of those wrap your hands around the throat moments. You know, that's just one of those moments. Uh, Paul probably would have reminded them what he had written to the church in Corinth. Look at it. You're there. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 8. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia. We were pressed out of measure. Above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Now I hate to tell you tonight, 
And I say this a couple times, but but really and truthfully, all all laughing and, and uh, all uh, all uh, uh, comedy aside, God never said He wouldn't put on you more than you can bear. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul taught that there are times when God will put on us more than we can bear. We need to understand that truth and why it is that, that God would do that. I, I want a, us to examine for maybe 20 minutes, I want us to examine carefully Paul's words here in verses 8 through 10. And from these verses, we can learn what God intends to do in us through our burdens and trials. So, three things that I want you to write down tonight. Number one, write this down. Our troubles should not surprise us. Our troubles should not surprise us. Notice verse number eight. He said, for we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble. Basically, what the Apostle Paul is saying is, I want you to be sure that you know about the trouble that we have experienced. Have you ever met somebody who... They hadn't been saved for very long. Maybe they have just given their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and three or four months down the road, they, they say something like this. They say, you know, since I trusted Christ, it seems like all kind of trouble has broken out in my life. Listen, burdens and troubles should not surprise us. It was the Lord Jesus Christ who said in John 16 and verse 33, in the world ye shall have tribulation. In the world, you're going to have it. It's not if, it is when. You will have trouble. George Duncan said, we need to remember that the badge of Christian service is not a cushion, it is a cross. Right. So Paul brings to our attention a couple of truth here, truths here. Number one is basic. We see in verse 8, troubles are a reality. I mean, it's just, just simple fact. Troubles are a reality. Our author is the great apostle Paul. You know that Paul, he wrote pretty much half of the New Testament. After Paul was dramatically, supernaturally saved on the Damascus Road, I mean the Bible indicates from all our readings that Paul became a mighty force for the faith. He became a mighty force for the gospel. I mean, you found nobody who loved Jesus more than Paul, who was as faithful as Paul and more committed to the gospel than him. I mean, that person just did not exist. However, this saved man who cherished God, who loved God, said, for we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of the trouble which came to us in Asia. Now, friend, I, I'm quite certain. I'll just, I'll just tell you now. I, I'm quite certain I'm not as committed to Jesus as Paul was. I'm trying to get there. I'm striving. I, I want to be there. So if I'm not, why in the world should I think that trouble should never befall me? Now, here's your money statement for the night. Here's your money statement for the night. Salvation does not exempt you from trouble nor will your service excuse you from trouble. I'll say it again. I mean, some of you couldn't even get it this morning. It was up on the screen. <laughs> Salvation does not exempt you from trouble, nor will your service excuse you from trouble. Friend, I cannot find anywhere in the writings of Jesus where he ever said his Father would never put on us more than we could bear. I cannot find in the Gospels Jesus ever teaching his followers that they would not face anything less than he received while he was here on this earth. The poet said, Must I be carried to the skies on flowery beds of ease while others fought to win the prize and sail through bloody seas? Are there no foes for me to face? Must I not stem the flood? Is this my world a friend of grace to help me on to God? You see, the sweet Son of God God was mocked, he was ridiculed, he was rejected, he was humiliated, ultimately he was assassinated. So I, I should never be amazed at the fact of my troubles, their reality. But notice also, troubles can be ruthless. I mean, they can be ruthless. Paul makes it plain in verse number 8. I mean, his words are great, words of gravity and words of, uh, of plainness. Paul educates us about the trouble which befell him while he was in Asia. Now, Bible scholars 
they're not precise on what situation Paul is describing here. I mean, he's been through so many. And we only know about the ones that are recorded in the Word of God. But it could have been anything he's talking about right here. What we are sure of is that this experience left a mark on the Apostle Paul. I mean, he remembers it vividly. That word trouble in verse 8 means pressure. It, its root word, or it, its root is a word that means to crush. And so notice what he says about this trouble. He says in verse 8, we were pressed out of measure. That speaks of, uh, of being weighed down. The idea is that whatever it was Paul went through in Asia, it was like a massive weight pressing down upon him until he could no longer stand it. But notice, he, he takes it a step further and he says, not only were we pressed out of measure, but we were pressed out of measure above strength. Paul says, man, I, I wasn't just pressed down by a massive weight, but it was so bad that I did not even have the strength to bear it. I mean, what I was carrying on my shoulders and, and what was going on in my life was above any strength that I had. It exceeded all of my strength. But he takes it a step further. Did you notice it? This trouble got so bad, Paul says, we despaired even of life. I mean, Paul thought this trouble that he's going through, this burden that he's carrying, he thought it was going to kill him and those with him. It was unbearable. Question. You ever been in trouble like that? I mean, it's a trouble where you don't have the strength to handle it. It's crushing you and you really think or you really thought, you know what? This is going to take my life. This is actually going to kill me. And then, and then you got a friend that comes by <laughs> and just puts his arm around you and says, Hey man, God is never going to put more on you than you can bear. Listen, after you slap him... <laughs> Tell him that's not, that wasn't true in Paul's life, so it's certainly not going to be true in my life. Amen? Don't let your trouble surprise you. But second of all tonight, notice this. Not only should our troubles not surprise us, but notice some of our troubles are just too strong for us. They're going to come, and when they come, some of them are just too strong for us. Look at verse 9. The great apostle Paul confesses that this trial in his life was more than he had strength to handle it. Notice verse 9. But we have the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead. Amen. Paul would later go on to say, and you know this verse, Paul would later go on to say, you know what? Three times was I beaten with rods, once I was stoned. <laughs> I three times I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep. I mean, I was treading water out there. Paul's no namby-pamby spineless believer. He was a pillar of faith and commitment, but that did not keep the burdens and troubles of life from, from coming into his life. Those burdens that he says were too great for me to bear. Matter of fact, that, that commitment and that faith uh, uh, may even have caused more trouble to come into his life. Because he was so committed to the gospel and to the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know that in this life we're going to face some trouble that we're not adequate to handle? You're going to have placed on you some burdens that you simply cannot bear. It'll be too much for you. It'll be too heavy for me. But always remember, these things that press us down to the point of no strength, they've not slipped past the will of God. Many are sent directly from God for the express purpose of exceeding our abilities. And that's great teaching tonight from the Apostle Paul. When we come face to face with our burdens and troubles that are too strong for us, here's what we realize. Number one, we realize that self is not sufficient. Many times, self is not sufficient. Paul described some of the trouble he encountered in Asia. He said, but we had the sentence of death in our cells. That sentence of death, that is a judicial term. It carries the idea that Paul felt like the verdict was in. The jury's come back and the verdict is in. My sentence is death. 
Paul saw no other outcome but death because this trouble was so bad. Can you imagine being in such a desperate situation? I mean, this is God's choice servant going through this. Why in the world would God allow his servant to reach a place so dark, to reach a place so difficult that he could only see death in his future? Why would God allow him to get to that point? Notice what he says in verse 9. But we have the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves. <laughs> he comes to that point, he says, so that we won't trust in ourselves. Right there it is, my friend. God had to show Paul that he could not trust in himself and he could not depend on his own strength in the troublesome times of life. Paul said in Romans chapter 7 and verse 18, he confesses, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. I'll admit to you tonight, and I believe my family can back this up, but I will admit to you tonight, I am a prideful, prideful man. This is a difficult lesson for me to receive. You know why? Because self in me wants to be sufficient. Self wants to be independent. Self likes to think it's, it's competent to handle whatever comes my way. After all, God will never put on me more than I can handle. I can get through this on my own. My abilities will get me through this. My, my, pick, up my pick up myself from my bootstraps and carry on. That's going to get me through it. Listen to me tonight. Wrong answer. Right, right. God knows that's not the truth. He knows I'm not sufficient to handle this load and take care of this trouble. So you know what he does? He just loads me down until I come to that realization myself. He loads me down until I realize my strength is not sufficient. My abilities are not enough. I need Jesus. He'll put more on me than I can bear that I might see his love for me and his care for me and helping me through that time. He will put more on me than I can bear to show me that I need him and I must depend upon him. He will put more on me than I can bear so that he can do something miraculous in my life that only he can get the glory from. The very gospel truth is that we can't save ourselves. Jesus died for us when we were without strength. So God must show us, as he does when he saves us, that we can't trust in ourselves. But notice also, our trust should be in, the God, be in God in the midst of trouble. Our trust should be in God in the midst of trouble. Self is not sufficient for our troubles. Our trust should be in God in the midst of trouble. Paul says... Paul says in verse 9, God put us in that life-threatening situation, that life-threatening trouble, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead. Aren't you glad that's the God we serve tonight? Amen. In which God, but in God which raises, raiseth the dead. In the midst of the trouble, God pressed Paul down and hung him out over the precipice of despair. So that Paul would learn not to trust in himself, but rather to put his trust wholly in God. So here's the truth. God will put on you more than you can bear. He will load you down until you collapse under the weight. And all you can do in that fallen state is look up to him and him alone for your help and hope. God gets us to that point so that he can teach us something. While God will put on you more than you can bear, He will never put on you more than He can bear. Amen. That's good, amen? amen. Uh, what's God's ultimate goal for us? It is that He might conform us to the image of His amen. Son. Amen. And He'll use any means necessary, even troubles, to conform us. Conform us enough that we will trust in Him. Though, though you are weak, Jesus is strong. And though you will fail, Jesus will never fail you. Our troubles should not surprise us. Some of our troubles are too strong for us, but last of all, notice troubles do not mean, do not ever mean that God has forsaken us. Verse number 10. The Bible says in, in, in verse 10, Who delivered us from so great a death? He delivered us, notice what he says, and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet 
deliver us. And that, that, that's good stuff right there. I mean, at one point down there in Asia, Paul felt certain that death going to be his only escape out of trouble. He was sure he's going to die. But in that experience, he testifies that he learned to trust in God, which raiseth the dead. Now, that's very, very important. Paul says that our God is the God who raises the dead. Now, why would he point that out in verse number 10? Why would he do that? Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Hey, hey, listen. God will allow trouble into your life as his child that has the potential to crush you. He will bring you there, but he will not leave you there. He will not abandon you in your trouble. Our God is going to deliver us one way or another. Amen? Amen? Did you hear the song the choir sang this morning? You know, whether, whether I go into rapture or whether he, he just uh, calls me home by way of the grave. He, he's going to deliver me one way or the other. Whatever I face, no matter how bad it gets, how hot it gets, how terrible it looks, how awful it is, I can still trust in a God who raises the dead. You see, friend, that is important because a God who has the power to raise the dead has overall power, let's say. Amen? A God who has the power to raise the dead certainly has the power to take care of my troubles Amen. and my burdens. Now here's what we learn from verse 10 as I close. He doesn't abandon us in our trouble. You, you know what happens? God has proven in the past that he's not going to forsake us. It's what Paul just said. Paul says he learned to trust in the God which raises the dead because he delivered us from so great a death. What Paul does, Paul looks back on his treacherous experience and he testifies that even though he thought he was going to die, God Almighty showed up and delivered him from death's cold hands. Friend, you may feel like you're there tonight. You may feel like you're at the breaking point. Guess what? You may be. You may be. Learn from Paul. Take your mind back to the faithfulness of God. Don't all of a sudden get spiritual amnesia. Look back and see his faithfulness to you. The times that he rescued you. He's still the same God tonight. You, you remember that time? You, you remember that time when you didn't think you could pay for that medicine? You didn't know how you was going to make your house payment? You didn't, you didn't know how you were going to do it. Remember how God came through? You, you thought it was the work of your hands or the work of somebody else's hands, but I'm telling you, it was God who came through. Remember, remember when your heart was broken, you didn't think it would ever get better, but God comforted you and brought you through. Most of all, my friend, do you remember when you were lost in your sins and headed for hell? I mean, you deserved death, you deserved hell, but God came through and He reached way down and saved your soul. Mm, hey, remember how He has already been faithful to you. He's not going to abandon you now. Was that great hymn say? Through many dangers, Toils and snares. I have already come. Tis grace that brought me safe thus far. And grace will lead me home. But notice also, God has promised not to forsake us now. He's promised not to forsake us. Hey, he's proven in the past that he won't forsake us. He, he has promised not to forsake us right now. Notice verse 10 again. Who delivered us from so great a death. And doth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Not only did God deliver me in the past, but he's still delivering me in the present. And he will deliver me in the future as well. We thank God for his past faithfulness. But we don't live in the past. We live in the present looking to the future. God is still alive and well tonight, Blue Ridge View Baptist Church. He is still working on behalf of his people today. I trusted him yesterday to take care of me. I'm trusting him today to take care of me. I will trust him tomorrow to take care of me until my last deliverance into the glory of heaven. Adoniram Judson was one of the first missionaries to penetrate the country of Burma. It's now called Myanmar. For years, Judson struggled to reach anybody with the gospel. The work was extremely difficult. His infant son died from disease. His wife stayed sick on the mission field. The language was very difficult for them to grasp. It took four years before they, first, before they saw their first con convert. And after 17 years, he only reported 10 Burmese believers. 17 years preaching the gospel and being faithful.
trying to, trying to become one of the Burmese people that he might, might share and live the gospel for him. 17 years, he only reported 10 conversions. Once, somebody rather snidely asked Judson what he believed were the prospects for the speedy conversion of the heathen in Burma. Without flinching, Adoniram Judson said, the prospects are as bright as the promises of God. Amen. The day may be dark right now for you. The light may be fading for you tonight. But never doubt in the dark what God has shown you in the light. Our Lord Jesus has promised that He'll never leave us or forsake us. His promises are sure and secure, which means we need not fear the troubles we now face or may face in the future. Are you like Paul tonight? Just weighed down? You like Paul tonight? You're just burdened without strength. You can't do it? Others may have told you now. Others may have told you that God will not put on you more than you can bear. They may have said it with a sincere heart, but they weren't telling you the truth. God never said that. God never promised that. If you're in that spot tonight as his child, it very well could be that this is the very place God intends for you to be. Don't, don't, don't try to muster up the strength to carry on. It'll kill you if you keep trusting in yourself. Instead, why not place your full faith and trust in in the God who raises the dead. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Heads bowed, eyes closed. I wonder tonight, who are you trusting in the midst of your troubles? Have you, have you been told all your life that God will never put on you more than you can bear and so uh, you're believing that and, and you're just trying to make it through on your own. You're just trying to get through. You're pressing on. And it gets heavier and heavier and heavier but, but you've been told God will never put on you more than you can bear so I just got to keep on. Friend, listen. God will put on you more than you can bear but He will never put on you he can bear. You've got to bring that to Him tonight. You've got to come to the point where you realize that self is not sufficient. It's not competent to handle this trial. You've got to collapse under that weight. Fall to the ground. Face toward the sky. And realize that your only help and your only hope comes from God above. Listen, if you'll allow Him to tonight, you'll allow Him to. He'll walk with you. He'll carry that load for you. But you just have to give it to Him and leave it with Him. Just leave it with Him. God, it's dark. God, the light's fading. It's hot out here. Don't know what I'm going to do. I feel like I'm going to die. Lord, that's your business. I'm just leaving it with you. I'm leaving. I've done all I know. Lord, I'm leaving it with you. Some of you need to do that tonight. I mean, just get prostrate on your face. On this altar. Say, oh God, I give it to you. My past, my present, and my future, I'm giving to you. Some of you here this evening, you've never been saved. You've never confessed your sin to Almighty God. You never said, Lord, I'm a sinner. You've never repented of that sin. You've never turned from it. And have come to Jesus. Turned your life over to Him. And He's calling you to do that tonight. He's calling you to leave your sin behind. Repent of it. Turn from it. Come to Jesus for forgiveness and salvation. You've never done it. You need to do it tonight. Other decisions that need to be made in this place tonight. Some, you believe God's leading you to become a part of Blue Ridge View Baptist Church. You come tonight. Some with other cares and trials and troubles and burdens, either in your life or in the life of someone you love and know. Maybe you would come tonight and pray for them. Don't leave this place tonight without getting real honest before God allowing Him to move in your life Jesus we pray right now 
you'd give us the strength to be obedient. Every head bowed, every eye closed.